The longest I have ever gone without sleep, previous to this experiment, is five days. I have been training my body for the past year to withstand conditions that most humans wouldn't even imagine. I have stayed awake 24 hours while lifting weights for 20 of those hours, then running five miles. I would then walk around for six and a half hours, making my total 30 hours. For the next 18 hours, I would continue my life like every day. Writing, documenting, talking, walking, working, etc. I have done this experiment successfully around 10 times, straining myself for 48 hours. I now have the stamina of, well, I don't know what to call it, but I have it. I regularly don't sleep for three days at a time. The longest anyone has stayed awake is 11 days and 25 minutes. It was set by Randy Gardner in 1963. I want to top that. Here, I will be documenting what happens as well as a camera that will be reviewed after every six days. Why am I doing this, you may ask? Well, me and a friend of mine want to see the effects that lack of sleep have on the human body. I won't have contact with anyone for as long as I can go without falling asleep. I will not use any energy boosters. Hmm. Wish me luck. Day 1, 12.03am. These first 24 hours have been a breeze. No signs of hallucinations, sleep deprivation, loss of cognitive or sensory abilities, and no eye bags. All work done today has been productive and easily completed. Appetite is unaffected. No signs of aggression or change in mood. Day 2, 12.04am. Day 2 is a repeat, with slight differences of day 1, but no signs of hallucination, sleep deprivation, or loss of cognitive or sensory abilities. I do have eye bags. No work done today has been productive and moderately easy to complete. Appetite is unaffected, but no signs of aggression, nor change in mood. Day 3, 12.01am. Today is actually easier than yesterday. No signs of hallucination, sleep deprivation, loss of cognitive or sensory abilities. And the eye bags aren't as noticeable. No work today has been very productive and easy to complete. Appetite is still unaffected. No signs of aggression nor change in mood. Day 4, 12.02am. Today has been the worst by far. No, no signs of hallucinations. Signs of early sleep deprivations. No loss of cognitive or sensory abilities though. Eye bags are carrying groceries. All work done today was not productive and moderately difficult to complete. Appetite is unaffected. No signs of aggression. Mood has been declined. Day 5, 12.04 a.m. It is worse than yesterday. Some signs of audible and visual hallucinations. It's seeing and hearing things that aren't there. Signs of moderate sleep deprivation. Slight loss of sensory abilities. Cognitive functions are normal. You can probably guess the update on the eye bags. All work done today was unproductive and very difficult to complete. Appetite is unaffected. No signs of aggression. Mood has declined moderately. Tomorrow is uncharted territory for me. I will not be leaving the testing chamber in my basement until the experiment is completed. I have nothing but this computer, a bed, food and water. 
Day 6, 12.05 a.m. It has officially been 144 hours since I slept. Various signs of visual hallucinations. I'm seeing small floating balls. Signs of moderate sleep deprivation. Slight loss of sensory and cognitive abilities. I'm unable to run or exercise for longer than 30 minutes per day without total exhaustion. A small amount of work done today, but very unproductive and extremely difficult to complete. Appetite slightly affected due to sickness of the stomach. Some signs of irritation. No aggression. Mood has declined moderately. Day 7, 12 a.m. The, the, the creatures have begun to haunt me in the shadows. I can ignore them for now. I have severe sleep deprivation. I have almost lost my ability to speak and cannot exercise or run, unable to do any work whatsoever. Appetite affected slightly due to vomiting. Extremely irritated. Some signs of aggression. Mood has declined severely. Day 8, 12.05 a.m. The monsters have been gone for today. I have severe sleep deprivation. I cannot exercise or run. Appetite moderately affected due to vomiting and inability to digest food. Extremely irritated. Signs of aggression. Mood is non-existent. Day 9, 12.07am. The monsters still aren't back, but they are watching. Always watching. I don't want to sleep anymore. I cannot run or exercise. I cannot eat, but I can drink small amounts at a time. I vomited six times today. I don't know if I'm being paranoid, but any noises at all have me wanting to scream. I have been trying to attack the creatures in the walls. I don't think my mood is any better. Day 10, 12.02am. The monsters won't come back. And I want them to. I just want to know where they are. Then I, I can stop them. I can't walk. I can't eat or drink. I have red goo coming from my mouth. I've been hitting the walls all day, and now my fists have, have the red goo coming out from them. Day 11, 12.03 a.m. I did it. I lasted longer than anyone ever has. The monsters aren't back yet, but, but they will be soon. They don't know I heard them say it. They will be back. And when they are, I will be ready. I have been preparing. I know that if I can't see or hear them, they can't hurt me. I won't tell you because you will tell them. I can scream. I've been screaming for seven hours. I can't walk or use my legs at all. I can't eat or drink. The goo is coming from my mouth and my hands. My fists don't hurt anymore, and I can hit the walls as much as I want. There are cracks in the white hard things that are in my knuckles. The skin is ripped off and stuck to the walls. Twelve days, one hour. 34 minutes and 16 seconds. Hello. I conducted this experiment with a friend of mine a few years ago. They went without sleep for the exact amount of time I just stated. 12 days, 1 hour, 34 minutes and 16 seconds. We found them in a bloody mess on the ground. We were unable to save them. I decided that I shouldn't tell their story until I felt it was the right time. They had clawed their eyes out. They were still attached, but just hanging out of their sockets. 
they had ripped their ears off and plucked them with stuffing of a pillow provided. They had ripped open their stomach and pulled out their intestines. Their heart had been crushed and was found with their hand wrapped around it, gripping it. They had a smile on their face. They had shattered knuckles, 14 broken ribs, and were paralyzed from the waist down. They had written, in blood, the words no sleep, over and over again, all over the walls. On the floor they had written a short passage, stating, I don't sleep, and I see them. You sleep, and you don't. Just don't sleep. Just don't sleep, over and over again. They had ruptured multiple arteries, and were pronounced dead on the scene. The footage was confiscated by the FBI and examined thoroughly, before being returned to me. It took me two years to watch it, and then after I got out of the mental hospital, I went into the middle of the woods and burned them. I don't know exactly what happened in that chamber. I saw all of it. I witnessed everything they did. Every single act. And yet, I still cannot understand the horrors that happened in that room. I don't know what to do. I am scared of what will happen if I don't sleep. But I can't sleep. No matter what I take or do. Nothing is working. I am scared. But I am ready. I am ready to see the monsters that mangled my best friend. So, I am putting myself inside the same chamber. I have the same computer. I have the same supplies. I have the same mindset. I have nothing left to lose. Hello, sinister listeners. If you've enjoyed this story, then you'll find all the author's information in the description below. For more content, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to succumb to the sinister.